All right, Shalom or peace to all the saints that tune into this video. Um, I want to give all praise to the Most High through His only begotten Son. So let's get straight into this video. The title of this is, Is the Law of Moses Done Away With? Right? Well, we'll answer that really quickly. But we're going to get into some, some deeper stuff. So let's go ahead and answer this. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So right off the rip, we see that the law is not done away with. Right. That was short and brief. But, <laughs> but this is where we got to really get into it. So, it's a lot of controversy around this. Because right here we see in Galatians 2 and 21, we see Paul say this. I do not frustrate the grace of God for righteousness come by the law. Then Christ is dead in vain. So, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the point? Like, is the law done away with? Like, if the righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. That's why it's important to understand that the Bible is written in parables. Right? It's written in precepts. You're going to find here a little and there a little. So, I'm going to go to Romans 7. I'm going to try to make this video quick as I can. Try to keep up with me. Romans 7 and 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So look at there. The law itself is spiritual, but is it only spiritual? Let's find out. Let me go to Romans 10. And... I'm going to start at verse 4. Yeah. For, no, I'm going to start at verse 3. For being, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness. To everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is, uh, which is of faith. So look at there. For faith is the end of the law for righteousness. Now remember, what did Paul say in Romans 7 and verse 14? We know that the law is spiritual but he is carnal now carnal means earthly or of this world right and the messiah himself said and the, um the apostle said if you are of this world you are enemy of god pray not for the world and then he also said in john 3 16 he loved the world so it's two different worlds as we see in hebrews 1 and 2 but that's not the topic of this video if you want to know anything about that go check out uh, my video before last, I believe. Um, but anyway, John 3.16 explained. That's the title of that video. But let's continue. So, we know that the law is not done away with until everything is fulfilled. That came straight from the Messiah. And he said, you should exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. Now, Paul said in Romans 10, righteousness come by faith. 
in that we know that the law is spiritual. So let's go to Hebrews 10. Now I'm going to start explaining to you what he means by this. For the law, having a shadow. Do you guys know what a shadow is? Let's keep reading. Of good things to come and not the very image. Check that out. So the law was a shadow or the likeness of things to come. And what do we see? Okay, before I even touch on this, let me pull up this real quick. One. Genesis 1 and 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image. Look at there. In our likeness. So the law was a likeness of good things to come but not that very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the uh, comers they're unto perfect for then i would they would not have ceased to be offered check that out now let me go to hebrews 7 let me go to hebrews 7 No, let me go to uh, Ashley. No, I'll go to Hebrews 7. Watch this. Hebrews 7. This is talking about Melchizedek. I'm going to start at verse 12, actually. For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity, a change also of the law. So is the law done away with? No, let me keep, let me script down. Let me skip down to verse 16. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless, endless life, which is the kingdom of heaven. Who is made not after the law of a carnal. So that means earthly, right? So you have an earthly law which was the law of Moses, which is where you get the burnt offerings. And then you have a spiritual law. We heard, we just read in Romans 7 and 14. We know the law is spiritual. Check that out. That's why he said in Romans 7 and 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Check that out. That's why he said at the end of this, so then with my mind, I myself, which is his spirit and his heart, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So carnal means the flesh, earthly body. Spiritual means heavenly body. Let me get that. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 15. Watch this. So the law, the law is never done away with. It just shifted from being carnal, earthly to spiritual. But watch this. We're going to make it make sense. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter into the, uh, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit and corruption. Check that out. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal, meaning that you can die in an earthly body, must put on immortality, a heavenly body. So when this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption, that this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallow up, swallow up in victory. Check that out. But actually, let me go back to verse. Let's see. 
42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. Look at that. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in the natural bodies. It is raised in a spiritual body. So you have an earthly law. Then you have a spiritual law, which that spiritual law is the law of Moses. But you have to understand that it's a parable. It's a shadow of things to come. Watch this. Let me go to 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 9. I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 9. Let me show you an example. For it is written in the law of Moses. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox, the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God care for oxen? So he's telling you the ox is going to die anyway because it's in an earthly body. Does God, did God really give you that law? So you could just look at it and be like, oh, yeah, you know, forever. That's my righteousness, right? I shouldn't mouth. I shouldn't cover up the mouth of a cow that's in the field and I'm going to be saved, right? No. Or verse 10. Or saith he all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope. See, that's the spirit of it. Hope. And he that thresheth in hope should be partaker in his hope. If we have sown into you spiritual things, it is a great thing. We shall reap your carnal things. So if we show, uh, show you heavenly things... Is it a good thing that we benefit from your earthly things? Check that out. So, no, the law of Moses is not done away with when the Messiah died and transitioned into being spiritual. So you still need to read the law of Moses, but you have to read it um, in a figure of things to come. See, the Messiah was the Passover lamb, right? But was he actually a lamb? You see, Paul just referred to, if you read this chapter, he's talking about elders, right? Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? That's how he started this. <sighs> but yeah, if you get what I'm trying to say, then you get it. I can do a part two to this because it's really a lot to get into. Um, I'm going to bring up something else. I'm going to point out something else. I'm going to go to Rome. I'm going to go to Hebrews 8. And I'm going to go to verse 5. Actually, verse 4. 4, this is talking about the Messiah. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. This is talking about the carnal law. So in reading Paul, you have to understand that He's speaking to about the corner law and he's talking about the spiritual law. So when he said this in Galatians, when he said that in Galatians 2 and 21, that a righteousness came by the of the law, then the Messiah is dead in vain. And then he turns around and say righteousness is of the law. He's talking about the spirit versus the flesh. Right. But anyways, for if he were on the earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, which that would be. Uh, Moses and Aaron descendants who serve unto the example and shadow see likeness of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for he said he for see said he that thou make all things according to the pattern the pattern that's the likeness shown to thee in the mount but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he's the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Take that out. Take that out. So a faith, the chief cornerstone of this spiritual temple is faith, which is by the Messiah. And truth, which is by the Messiah. Check out my video about what is the Messiah, because you can find out in 1 Corinthians 12. Matter of fact, I'll get that real quick before I end out this video. About exactly what the Messiah is, and then you can understand. 1 Corinthians 12. 
I ended up going a lot longer than I thought I would. Check this out. Watch this. Now there, I'm gonna start at verse. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start here. First Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one, it has many members, and all members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is the Messiah, Christ. For by one spirit, Christ, the Holy Spirit, are we all baptized into one body. Check that out. But they're all one spirit. Right? Whether we be Jews, Gentiles, whether we be born or free, we have all been made to drink. We have been all made to drink into one spirit. Check that out. And then if you read up here, it shows you the different. Check, I'm going to just read it. Verse 8. 4 to 1. Now I'm going to start at verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are uh, differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it's the same God was working all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. So that's part of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the gifts. That's one of his fruits. That's one of his commandments. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith, look, by the same spirit which is the chief cornerstone or the head of the body to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another working of miracles to another prophecy and to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one by the self same spirit divided to every man severally as he will. So the Holy spirit is composed of many words and different fruits and different gifts right but you need to learn the law of moses to understand the new testament uh the law has been shifted into a more of a spiritual thing right it's still the same law you still have to keep it but you have to keep it spiritually for example like thou shalt not like he chose he showed you thou shalt not muzzle the ox the mouth of the ox that treaded the corn that's just one example. But anyways, if you understand what I'm trying to say, like I said, we can do a part two uh, and peace.